Hi everyone and welcome to my place. I have these beautiful blue and white hydrangeas and I wanted a gorgeous container to put them in. I hunted high and low and everything that I found was seriously super expensive. So I looked at the vase that, or the container that I liked and I thought, well, you know what, I could do that. So I thought, once I nutted it out, I thought, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it as well. This is the container. I wanted something that was quite big and bulky and weighty enough to hold the visual weight of the hydrangeas. It's very, very, very easy to do. Let me just put these down and I will show you what's involved. Get a container, any kind of a container. This is a terracotta garden pot and all I've done is put a layer or, or two layers of my chalk paint. Um, if you can't buy the chalk paint, I have got a recipe up there which is pretty much just to every cup of acrylic flat base paint. You add two tablespoons of plaster of Paris and water to mix it to a pancake consistency. It dries really, really hard and it is seriously tough, tough, tough once it's on there. The next thing, let me get rid of this, the next thing that you need to do is, now I've got to put my glasses on, is, now this is Iron Orchid and these are, you can buy these stamp sets, um, I've got mine online, and it gives you all that beautiful twirl patterning that from a lovely, you know, from an, a time of resplendent beauty, grace and elegance is what I call it. So they come in lots of patterns and the one that I'm using is the twirl or the Garden Rose twirl, which is beautiful. Now, when you get your kit, you just peel off the backing and then each of these images here are different stamps that you can use. So what I loved about this was it had the lovely writing. It There was a beautiful little dragonfly. There were the gorgeous roses and these little ones that come with it that means that you can get into the corners or you've got different patterns to work with. It's just a matter of peeling those off like so, and it is the un the raised surface is where we're going to apply the paint. Now I need I wanted that beautiful wedgy woody blue look, and so what I did to achieve that was, it's just you now where are my glasses? Oh for goodness sake, it's getting worse my eyes. Now I'm just using a cobalt blue, which was a little bit too intense for me. Let me just get that off there and put lids on as you go. It was just a little bit too intense. If you didn't want to use the cobalt blue, the other one that's quite nice is the ultramarine, and that will give you that beautiful, beautiful, clean, crisp blue. Into that, I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny little bit of black. And when I say tiny, I mean a drop at a time until you get the depth of blue that you desire and just keep mixing that in. Yeah, that's getting to be it. I like that sort of oldy, oldy, like a little bit dirty. See that there? Just so it's just a little as much as you would put on your toothbrush when you're putting your toothpaste onto your toothbrush is about as much as you need. If you wanted to make that a little bit darker, just add more black and keep going until you get the colour that you want. The next thing to use is a roller and they come white. <laughs> Mine's a bit black because I've been a little bit rough with it. And then just push that onto there like so. You'll need to cover your work surface so that you don't make a mess. And then what I've done here is I've just got two towel, uh, one towel, and then just roll it because you, it's gonna roll around. Just use your two towels and then put that so that you've got like a little well in the center which is gonna hold that in place. And then I just use a little bit of baking pa parchment or paper to put into that. And then look at that, that stops the whole thing from rolling around. It's quite nice, it's like baby's nappy, it's nice and firm and tight. The next thing to do is to just get your paint, oops, and then just give that a wee roll until you've completely covered your roller in paint. Now you don't need to too much. Now the other thing I wanted to achieve is, hold on, just get rid of that and that. I use it, the baking paper's great. So just roll that over your stamp 
And what I love is that when you put this onto your pot, what you're going to get is a slightly, a little bit of movement, which at the end of the day is what I want because I don't want it perfect. Right, getting that and then just taking that across to there carefully and then all you do is apply just a little bit of pressure if you had another roller you might like to use it about now but I've only got one because I ruined the other one and you just push that in and then ah oh, I love it look at that look at that beautiful agey vintage not to I don't I don't want the image to be too perfect because I want to be the artist here and I want to create the look that I want to. So isn't that just beautiful? So just keep going and then when that is completely dry you can put a little bit of varnish over it if you want it to be nice and shiny. But for what I wanted to achieve, I just loved, like see some of them, some I've gone over again with a little bit more, a little darker bits and then this little dragonfly, I just sort of like pushed it on and took it off. This one here is just a little bit more different than the, the, the other one. But it's just all those variations and patterning that will give you the look that you want. And then the writing, you can sort of kind of make out the writing, but isn't that just beautiful? Ta -da! And if it's going outside, you are going to have to seal it. But I sort of thought I might like to even hit the outsides with a little bit of sandpaper to make it a little bit more rustic. But at this stage, I just actually like it the way that it is. I hope that I have solved your problems on how to get the perfect vase for the perfect flowers. Thanks for watching and I will see you all again another day.